What up, Box Chevy family? It's your boy, Box Chevy P. We back again with another one. As y'all can see from the title, man, if it ain't one thing, it's another. But one monkey don't stop a show. We gonna keep this shit going, man. If you're here watching the video, and you just stopping by the channel, man, and you ain't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, while you got a minute, I know y'all hear a lot of YouTubers say it, but hit the like button, man. If you support me, support me by hitting the like button, because that like button and comment, that's, they get your videos out there, man. The more likes and stuff you get, the more YouTube recommends the video. So hit that like button for your boy, man. If you rock with me, smash the like button. Let's try to get this thing to like a 1,000 likes if we can. But anyway, I don't know if y'all can hear it in my voice. I'm tired as hell. I really, really be pushing myself to do these videos. When y'all hear me say that in the video when I say, man, y'all lucky. I, I love my supporters. I'm doing this video for y'all. I literally do this video for y'all. Y'all know this ain't my bread and butter. Like I said, I make money off YouTube, but not enough to support my lifestyle or whatever. But y'all know I got businesses, so that's what I... That's what keeps me drained, man, just doing a bunch of stuff. And besides being a business, being a full-time father, you don't get paid to do that, but that shit is a full-time job within itself when you got three, four kids that live with you. And then on top of that, you're a full-time dad. So I got my kids full-time. They don't live with their mother. They live with me. So full-time dad, that job alone is, man, hectic. So I salute anybody out there, man, handling their business, taking care of their kids, man. I salute you, man. I respect any man who handles his business. But anyway, I'm going to show you all this car, man. We got a little, little something. This ain't going to no major video. I'm out here in the garage now. I feel pretty good out here. I'm just not too long. Got back. Um, dropped my daughter off at school. But I was going to make this video later. I said, what the hell? I might as well go on to get it together now. So what I'm doing, I was just out here messing with the Monte Carlo with the headlights. You know, I had them in, but I never had them wired up. But the other day, we had a mishap on the car, actually. So, uh... I'm going to get to that. We ain't going to even talk about the other business right now. We're going to get to that. And for everybody who was asking about this front clip, it's already sold. Um, I had it sold before I even pulled it off the car. Y'all know one thing about me. I'm going to sell some parts. But there's a lot of things. I, I be wanting to keep them, but I don't want to have a fucking a whole bunch of parts in my garage. But the crazy part is a lot of stuff that I've got rid of, rid of I actually need it. Come back to need it. So sometimes you got to learn what you might need and what you don't. Now, if I had a little storage somewhere, I'd just start going and put parts in there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Give me another storage so I can go start putting parts back in the storage. Because uh, it'd be a lot of shit that I get rid of that I end up needing along the line, later down the line. So, but yeah, this front clip is already sold. This is actually sold too with the clip. You just got to come back and get it. Because, you know, that's the front bumper filler. And they don't sell these new. Not that I know of. I haven't seen nothing new for the 80s, uh, 85 and under box Chevy. You know, the other one is going up too for the front clip. For that uh, 86 to 90. That uh, bumper filler, I remember that used to be like 30 bucks, 20 something, 30 bucks. Now they're selling for 150 and 160 because it's about supply and demand. When people see it's a large demand for stuff, that's when they start taxing through the roof. Like you remember cigarettes, and I don't smoke cigarettes, but I remember cigarettes used to be like four or five dollars, three or four dollars for a pack of cigarettes. Now they're like 15, damn near 20 dollars for a pack of cigarettes. That's because they know people going to buy them. So anything that they know people going to constantly demand and buy, they're going to raise the prices on it. And another thing too, we need to come up with some names for uh for the box Chevys. I might I might still rename them Rosie and Earlene. I might give this one Earlene again. I might name this Rosie 2.0. Earlene 2.0, Rosie 2.0. What y'all think? Y'all let me know. Because Earlene is a special person to me in my life. That's my favorite auntie. And then my granny Rosie, you know, I got her name tatted on my arm, which I got this tat when I was like 16. So it was like, what's going on with you, bro? I was like 16, so I ain't really, you know, it's a little old ass tat, but Rosie is my, my, my granny, so I think I'm going to name this one Rosie. But y'all let me know what y'all think. What's a good name for the box in the Monte Carlo? Come up with something. But I'm going to push this Monte Carlo out real quick so y'all can see the little damage I've done. Or I didn't do it, but we're going to show the damage that's done. And as y'all can see, too, my Durali trans cooler finally came in. I had a cheaper one. I said, you know what, I'm going to go with Durali. I'm actually getting rid of these fans, too. I told y'all that in the last video. These fans got to go right here. I might let them. I might roll with them for a minute, but I'm going to get them out of here. I'm going to give me some Durali fans, too. They, these fans, these like the eBay fans. They usually work pretty good for me, but I want that overkill. I want to make sure the car stay nice and cool because the, the cooler the, en the engine stays, the cooler, the, the better it runs. So I want to have a little overkill. And like I said, these are the same ones I had in the Caprice. Mr. 75 said he drove it two and a half hours. No overheat, and it was in the middle of the summer, so it was 80, 90 degrees when he drove it back, and it was good. So these fans work, but like I said, these just some little cheap eBay fans. They only cost two, three hundred dollars. So 
I want to go with them expensive ones. I'm gonna get the. Uh, I'm gonna go with the ones that's like 700 bucks. It's a 700 bucks. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but they got them real high. They got like 4,000 CFM because they say you need at least 2,600 CFM fan to cool your uh, motor. And then you know you got more horsepower. The more horsepower you, the more uh, CFMs you're gonna need to cool your car now because your car got to stay cool in order to function properly. But let me push this. Out. I'm gonna set you up on the stand. I push this thing out of the garage and then we go from there. Let's go. So here we go. I know y'all not used to seeing this thing outside of the garage. This thing looks super mean outside the garage. It's dirty, never been washed, but uh, this thing look good outside the garage. That's how I used to do the blue box Chevy. I used to do all that stuff in the garage. Then when I finally got it on the street, I'm like, God damn, this car look good outside the garage. But this thing look mean, man. It got a rake in the front now. See, I'm gonna have it to where the back is squatted a little bit more and the front is up. And everybody keep asking me, man, are you gonna put some wheels on? Are you gonna put some wheels on it? Not right now. You know how I do it. Just like my other blue Caprice, I never put no wheels on a two door. I like to have one car like original Conda that look like a muscle car. And then I like to have one on big wheels. So this is going to be the big wheel car with the 28s on it. This one right here, I'm going to keep it original looking as a muscle car. Maybe later in the future, I might put some on there as long as I ain't got to cut it. If it's something I could put on there without cutting the car, I will do that. But as of now, I just want this to look like an original Monte Carlo, which is going to still be custom because it got a new engine, the transmission, and um, a brand new interior. So... We're gonna do that, but I actually, I'm actually going to get the roof done too. Once I get the car running, I'm going to get a roof put in there. Yeah, I remember I had that big panoramic for it. I sold that. I'm just gonna go with a more classy roof. So I'm just gonna get like a 36 or a 40 inch roof put up here. You know, just like a three or four stage roof, something nice. And then um, my interior is actually almost done as well. I spoke to Diego, actually the night before last, and he was finishing up my back seat. So I'm pretty sure my seats and stuff will be done by the weekend. So I got to pull all of this stuff up out of here as of now. And I think for now, like I said, I'm going to take all these seats out. I got to do the carpet, headliner, and then the dash. Instead of me wrapping the dash, I'm just buying a whole brand new dash in black. So this whole dash pad, only thing I'm going to have to paint is that right there, that little part that goes around here where the black part is snapped into right there with my finger point. I have to paint that part, but everything else is going to be just like a brand new one. It's going to come in uh, black because this one right here, I would have painted it, but it got a couple cracks in it. And I don't know how to do the fiberglass and this shit on there. So I'm just going to buy a brand new and I'm not buying a dash cover. They got a little cheap dash cover. It's like a hundred and some bucks. I'm buying an actual dash. It's like almost 800 bucks. But, you know, that's how I am. I want it to look pristine. And then I got ultra leather going in here. So I'm going to get a nice new dash. The dash cover look, the dash pad look cool that people use. Or dash cover. I'm using a dash pad. That's going to be a dash pad that's going in here. So that's what I'm going to do. It just look much better, though. But this thing look good out here, man. But let's get to what y'all came here for, man. Let's look at this. Just let's look at the bullshit that happened. Oh, man. I actually looked worse in the garage. But uh, that's it right there, man. That's it. Y'all want to know the story behind it? That's it, man. Nice big ass dent knocked all my paint off that joint. Look at that shit. It looked bigger in the garage though. Standing out here, it looks smaller, but that shit is still an eyesore. So now I gotta take it back in, get it done. I'm gonna have to restripe the door, take all the emblems off of the door. The good thing is I got some more Monte Carlo SS stuff in the trunk. Tank, you opening the door up now, man? Look at this dude. He just opened the door. Now the door was closed. What you doing? He actually would get up there with his hand and with his paws and twist the knob. Dude is sick. All right, go back in the house. Go back in the house. Go. He know better. He'll be seven in uh, July with his big head ass. Look at him. He always being nosy. He say you got to see what's going on around here. Come here. Say what's up to the box, Shay fan. Sit down. Give me five. Hop, nope, nope. Sit, sit still. Sit still. Give me five. Give me five. No, sit still. Give me five. Good boy. So back to the car. I'll tell y'all what happened real quick. Y'all see this bike rack right here, right? So the car, and this crazy part is my people always say, they, if you've been in my comment section and you told me before, 
Man, don't scratch the car. Comment on this. I got a lot of my subscribers. I got a, I'm known for accidentally scratching my cars after they get new paint jobs. But anyway, see, this is a bike rack, right? It was my, my son's bike, not this bike. It was my son's bike. He got like a 20-inch Mongo's bike. It was hanging right here. So I was making room for the land out. This happened a few days. Actually, when I first bought the land out, I just ain't show y'all. But um, I was making room for the land out. I actually had it on video, but I had it in fast motion so y'all didn't see it. On the, when I was pushing the land out on the, on the video, when I bought the land out, y'all seen us pushing it out of the garage. That's when it happened. But long story short, it was right here. So I was moving it up. I had to push the ladder and stuff out the way. So I moved the front wheel and I hung it on that nail right there just to hang it up there just for a couple seconds while I moved some stuff around because it was hanging too low down here. So once I hung it up on that nail, it was up there for like maybe five, ten minutes. And then I'm sitting here talking to my son. I'm standing in this position right here. Talking to my son, right? Now, mind you, the Monte Carlo wasn't over here because it, we didn't have a land dial in here yet. So the Monte Carlo was in the middle. So the Monte Carlo was way over here. The bike fell off the wall, off that nail. The nail bent, bike fell, and the back pegs on the bike swung all the way over. The, like, it fell on the front handlebars, and the back part of the bike swung over and slammed into my door. I was so, And I could have ran and stopped it, but I thought it was so far away that it wasn't going to touch my car. But it did. It went all the way over. And slammed into the back of the door. So the pegs that you stand on on the back wheels slammed into this car right here and did this. So this is going to set me back at least a, a G probably. Just getting this door painted. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to have to get it painted and I'm going to have to get it wet sand and buffed. And I'm going to have to get the stripes put back on there. Now, actually, the stripe part, because they're going to blend it, they ain't going to want to paint half of the door. So I was going to say they could really tape the stripes off, which he probably can. But I don't know how good that would look. So you have to be real precise to tape them stripes off. But, uh... I got a brand new stripe kit in the trunk, still left over from this stuff. So I got the Monte Carlo SS sign too. Let me see. It's gonna double check. So it's always something. Got too many car keys. Let me see. Let's see. So yeah. I might have to buy the SS again. Cause I don't think I got it. I got the stripes for the door though. These are the stripe kits for the door. So that's cool. I got more than enough of those. And I just say Monte Carlo. So uh yeah, I'm gonna probably have to buy the SS emblems. Hopefully they sell them separately. But yeah, I don't think I got them. I thought I did, but what it say on the side of the door it say SS. Monte Carlo SS on the door. So yeah. I got the Monte Carlo part. But I don't have a part to say SS on it. Let me see. So yeah, I got the Monte Carlo part. So I had an SS. So I can yeah, I can buy them SS badges in black. But y'all see how precise I had to paint this thing, man. Look, you know that trunk sticker got to be in place, man. That's a major, major part. VN number, all the service identification numbers over there. This thing, like I said, I'm gonna get this trunk done as well. I still gotta put the gas tank in and um. What else I gotta do this? I gotta put the gas tank in here, the fuel pump in there. I gotta put that in the gas tank and then I gotta put, uh, just run a harness in here. When I, once I run a harness and do that, then I gotta go get the drive shaft as well. I've been doing so much other stuff, I really haven't had a chance to go get it. But once I do the drive, I gotta do the drive shaft, run the harness, and um, see, that's pretty much it. It's cranking right now. Y'all wanna hear it crank? Oh, give me one sec, I'm gonna show you. I ain't gonna crank it all the way over because. Ain't no oil in here, but I'm just gonna turn it one time, let y'all hear it. Brand new battery, by the way, everything brand new. Y'all see, I put all these wires in here. I put brand new battery battery cables and everything in here. So them AC Delco, I ran all that stuff brand new. I just wanted this car to look new under the hood. And to be honest, this car actually, and I'm not even done, because I still got to snip wires over here. Get rid of a lot of this stuff, but this car actually looked cleaner under the hood than a, a box Chevy did. And the reason being is because the black and white separate you know the box chevy had a, a darker color so you really can see the separate colors like this is and this that's what make it look cleaner plus on top of that i was able to get more new parts for under the hood of this car than i was for the box chevy so this one definitely look way newer under the hood which is a good thing but let me get the key i'm a um what do i got in my pocket yeah i'm gonna turn it around quick and let y'all hear it crank but i got everything hooked up to where it's cranking it just needs to, uh, like I said, get the fuel delivery and the uh, headers and all that stuff put on there, which I got all of that inside the garage for the people that don't know. Let me see. So we 
go. Okay, the battery not hooked up. I just stuck it to there. I didn't really screw it on. Let me put it to get a better connection. Let y'all hear it. But yeah, he definitely turned over. Still gotta hook the AC up. Okay, give it a couple of turns. I forgot how to disconnect the black too. I thought the black was still connected, the negative. And I had ran this, I was thinking about putting another steam port on here, from here to the crossover line, because those crossover lines is very important, y'all. Because a lot of people, a lot of people don't know the small detail. You hear the radio on in there. A lot of people don't know the small details about these motors, but it's small technical stuff that you need to do in order for your motor to run healthy. That steam port, they got one in the front. The one in the back is always blocked off from the factory, but I, I run a, you know, they had a little metal line going across there, usually from the factory, but I don't like how that one looks, so I get the aftermarket one right there and put it in there. So those, those steam ports right there, they help your motor circulate better, you know, when you, when it's running, you know, say it, it pressure build up in there and it's getting hot, the steam ports help vent your motor. It's like a ventilation system. So it keeps, it helps keep your motor cooler. But here we, here we go, let's give it another crank. Yep, I gotta, I'm gonna have to use the, let me, give me one second. I'm gonna have to uh, just tighten it up with a wrench because the connection ain't strong enough for me to crank it by itself. You know, you gotta have it all the way mounted down. So I'm gonna use this little wrench and do that real quick. You gotta be careful with these little metal wrenches, especially when you're doing the positive side. Because if I swing that and hit something negative, it's gonna spark. Negative size, you're good because it's the ground side. But uh, now, now it'll crank. It ain't gonna start, but it's gonna crank. And like I said, I don't have a coils hooked up, or I don't have a fuel delivery system hooked up, which I'm gonna be working on that this weekend as well. So we're gonna get that squared away. But let's see. Let's get a good crank now. <laughs> He cranks. He cranks for sure. So, y'all see, he, and it sounds good to that thing cranking over, but y'all don't want to do that too much. Like I say, it's a little oil in there, though. I got a little oil in there, but ain't no, ain't nothing else in there. I ain't got no transmission fluid or nothing, so I'm going to pour all the fluids in before I crank it up. I won't be cranking it no more. I just did that just to show y'all, though, but he will, definitely will crank, man. So, he'll be ready and running real soon. Like I say, it's right there. It's ready to roll. Just a few more things. I got to get all this stuff situated. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is getting cut out. I just left it there for now until I figure out what's for the AC and what ain't. Once I do that, I'm cutting a lot of this harness out of there. And uh, I'm going to hide all the wires and everything. So everything going to be nice and clean. You won't see none of this. Because like I said, most of this is getting cut out. I still got to mount the battery cables down. I already mounted the... Um, I already mounted the... Uh, negative over here you see i had to scratch some paint off of there so i can get a good connection it's for the battery negative battery cable but i mounted that zip tied it to the to the thing when i was drilling the hole through there to put a zip tie through there i see a little bit of the paint chipped off but it's ran nice and neat that's what i'm all about like i like to run my stuff nice and neat i want it to look like it came from the gm like that so that's why i run my stuff so nice and neat I'm, that's one big thing people know about me like my holes this was looking rough for a minute too. I had to figure out a cleaner way to run this because they had the hoses stand straight up. The original hoses stand straight up, then it turn and do all that. So I found one that was on like a 90 degree angle like that. And then I just swerved it around there. So I just get the good clearance and stuff. So everything looked clear. Ran my ground down here. You know, you got to have one ground. Then it's to the frame there. There, that's the same spot I ran it in the box. And there's going to be another one from the back of the motor. To the, to the chassis of the car. So you gotta have one, and you can have more than two grounds, by the way. If you want four grounds, you can do it. Grounds just make for a better connection and, a, and make your car, you know, function a little better because you got everything grounded properly. But I usually just do two grounds. Like I said, I do one from the back of the head of the motor. So from the head, so this part of the motor in the back, it'll be a screw to the firewall, and then I'll do that one to the frame. So one from the from the motor to the frame, one from the motor to the firewall, to the body of the car or the chassis, whatever you want to call it. But this thing is uh got a little minor setback, like I said, so it's gonna have to go back to the shop. And also, I'm gonna have to get my front bumper repainted because look at this. 
So the guy who did the striping kit, he put Monte Carlo, which Monte Carlo doesn't go there. Nothing go there. It only supposed to say Chevrolet on this side. So he put Monte Carlo there. So what I had got, I had got the eraser wheel and start erasing this. But I'm forgetting that this is plexiglass and it's like plastic. So it folded and then the stuff peeled off of there. So he gonna have to tape that off and he gonna, I'm gonna have to get that front clip painted too. But it's all good. So the front clip gonna get painted again. And then that door. Other than that, like I said, we've been doing a pretty good job. That's why you usually keep your car in storage because of stuff like that. You know, the kids walk through the garage, they come out here. They, my kid's not allowed in my garage unless I'm out here. You know, they might come through the garage here and there, but they will be coming on that side. I don't let them come out here messing with bikes, nothing. They need anything, I come out to the garage and get it. Simply because of stuff like that, which it wasn't their fault. You know, that was more of my fault than my son's fault. And the crazy part is he just had brought that bike about the basement. That bike had been in the basement for like two years. He just literally brought it up. And um, when he brought it up, it hung on the wall and did what it did. So yeah, we got a little, little, little damage, but like I said, overall the car is still cool. We just got to get that, but I'm gonna get it running. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm gonna get it running and driving and then uh, get the exhaust done. Then I go take care of that. I drop it off up there and that'll be something they can take care of in a, a day or two. So I'm not worried about it, but I might have to just leave it up there just cause I wanted to get wet sand and buff cause the rest of the car been wet sand and buff. And uh, I don't want that door looking dull and everything else nice and shiny. So they gonna have to do that. But white, white is a good color. Cause like I said, it hides a lot of imperfections. Black is the total opposite. You know what I'm saying? You can see some stuff through white, but white, it hides a lot of blood, like, you know, the wavy lines and all that stuff, which this car is pretty straight. But black, you gotta have that thing straight or it look like glass. Otherwise you're gonna see every land perfection in it. But that's pretty much it, man. Just wanted to show you all that. I'm gonna start sweating now, so I'm finna get my ass up out of here. Um, yeah, I got some things to do. I ain't gonna even speak on it right now. I just said bring y'all back in a minute, but I'm finna get this car. I'm actually not about to do no work out here. I gotta go get some things done. So I'm gonna handle my business, get back to y'all in a minute. I just want to bring another video to y'all, show y'all what it is. Box Chevy supposed to be getting dropped off Tuesday. So as long as I can get this trim off, and if anybody got to know how to get this trim off, I, I know a lot of people say slide it, but I've been trying to slide it and it ain't been working, but I got the fender trim on each side for the Landau trim and I need to get that trim off before I can get it to the paint shop. So I need to do that this weekend. So if anybody know how to get that Landau trim off, and I don't need nobody guessing, I can guess myself. If you really know how to get it off, let me know. Like I said, I was assuming how all the other trim go on and it would slide off. But like I said, I lifted it up with the little clip thing, plastic thing, but it's not quite working. It's already coming off a little bit. As y'all can see, it's coming off a little bit right here because one of these clips, somebody must have popped it off. But these ain't the types you pop on, you slide this trim on. So you gotta be extra careful because you don't want to scratch your car, which I don't care about scratching it right now because it's not painted, but I need to get that trim off before I get it to the front, to the shop. Because I'm taking that trim off and then I'm going to pull the rear clip off too. I was supposed to do that last time. So I'm pulling this rear clip off. And if anybody need a rear clip, I got a rear clip for you. If you want a uh, 85 rear clip, this one can go. But the front one, I got a, I got a front Euro clip on the way already. But I'm going to still leave it off while the car get painted. I'm going to leave the rear one off while it get painted. And then I'm going to have them take the window trim and stuff off. The back window trim is already off. All the other trim is already off. So basically, I just need to take that rear clip off and then... um go from there so that's pretty much it on both cars i just want to show y'all that appreciate y'all watching this run a real real serious video just had to show y'all you don't have to bring y'all along show y'all the little shit that be going on man it's always trials and tribulations when you're a car guy you can definitely relate because i'm pretty sure i'm not the only person that has scratched their paint before but uh like i say shit happens it really was devastating i was pissed off when it when it happened but like i said shit happens man it's definitely a setback but i gotta go up there anyway so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. And like I said, get it resprayed and um, just get the door redone and we'll be good to go. But like I said, this car will be hitting the streets this summer. Interior is about done. I got to actually do some more stuff as far as painting the interior pieces this weekend. But this car will be hitting the streets. It won't be 100% complete, but it will be mostly complete. Running and driving, AC blowing, all that good shit. So y'all stay tuned. And um, I'm going to catch you on the next one, man. Peace.